For today's episode, I was inspired by another podcast I'd heard. I also, in addition to having one, obviously, I listen to a lot of them, and these days I feel like pretty much everybody and their mother has a podcast. So it kind of makes me wonder, like, do I really deserve one? But then, I don't know, you, then you say to yourself, well, why not? Anyway, uh, this podcast, it was Alex Hermosi. I, I forget who's hosting it, but... They were talking about the whole notion of, they're certainly not the first people to ever bring this up, people who are kind of motivated by proving others wrong, and that chip on their shoulder, I guess you would say, and they, so Alex Hermosi obviously has had a lot of success in the business entrepreneurial realm, and the host was also, he was, he's, he's kind of like cut from the same cloth, and they were saying that if they were to hire somebody, they would much rather prefer the person with that chip on their shoulder, motivated by fear and doubt and proving people wrong because it's the most powerful motivator there is. They feel like in their experience, it's more motivating than somebody who simply wants to do well, but also that they feel and not just that they feel this way, but from their personal experience and I think just from others that they've heard, other examples out there is that that sort of mentality, there's an expiration date on it, basically. There's a point at which that becomes toxic and they feel like that point is about a decade where it'll drive you to a certain level and... For some people, they probably couldn't reach it without that. And that it gives them an advantage over somebody who isn't motivated in that way or just doesn't have that, I guess, sort of theme playing out in their life. But that you can get sort of burnt out on it and it gets to a point where it doesn't serve somebody anymore and it's kind of more harmful than it is helpful. And it made me think of a couple of things. Uh, one of the things that it made me think of is Michael Jordan, he's famous for, I guess, sort of when he was playing, he would be motivated by, you know, naysayers and doubters and people who either didn't believe in his talent or when it got to a certain point where obviously that was undeniable, it was people who just like, didn't want to see him do well. And he would, would win and he would just have a lot of light and throwing it in these people's faces and everybody loved it because of what he was achieving but then his hall of fame speech was all i guess sort of like taking digs at these same people and everybody was kind of like oh like you know you need to let it go but i can understand it's what made him successful so if you're if you're wired that way and it's rewarding you why would you change it up I think for me personally, I definitely had a lot of that. I felt like as much as most of the people that were in my community growing up were very supportive, there was de I definitely felt sort of this stigma or sense that there were people who didn't think I was very smart and would amount to very much. And that absolutely drove me because of course I did want to write my book and shove it in all their faces that I'm not an idiot. I guess if your definition of not being an idiot is writing a book, then that would be it. I, who's to say? But it drove me. Uh, certainly, I made it known with certain people who I felt like really did not think a lot of me. But the problem with that, I think, is like, because it's negative, right? So it as much as it drove me, it drove me to a certain point. There was a point in time where that did get old. Cause then it's like, and and they were saying it, Alex Hermosi, this other guy, they were saying it too. It gets to a certain point where you're giving those people too much power in your life, especially if these aren't people that you even like or they're not relevant in your life anymore. I feel like there's really no way that that can't impact you negatively and I guess if it gets you to where you need to go to a point it's good but there is a point where it does more harm than good and I absolutely felt that probably you know what I would say I felt it the most in the period of time in between when I had finished my first book and when it was published because I think I recognized that it wasn't 
it got me to where I needed to be, but it wasn't serving me anymore, and it was only it was only dragging me down on a personal level. And also, these people, like, they don't really know you, so what does it matter what they really think? Especially as you get older, it's like they knew a version of you that was still sort of, I mean, it was incomplete at the time, but also progress, so... Not only is it not relevant and, and negative, but you don't want to give those people, like, they don't deserve that power. So I found it much more helpful to let it go. And I think, same with Michael Jordan, it's, especially when it served you, I'm sure it can be hard to let it go, especially if you don't really know how. I think for me, I was able to come by that very organically, the how as to like how to let that go. Like I said, there were also a lot of people who were very supportive and there were even people who were very special that they almost went the other way with it. It was like, I don't know, my Aunt Kathy, I talk about her a lot, but there were a few others where it's like they just thought everything that I did and touched was wonderful. And I kind of thought that they were biased for their own reasons and they didn't know what they were talking about. And everybody else who thought the opposite had to be right because they had some sort of credential of some kind that made their assessment credible in my mind i mean again i was a child so it's now i know that doesn't make sense I, I understand why i believed it at the time but i thought about the people who were really in my corner and very supportive and i think the motivation shifted to proving those people right that they saw something in me and i got to a certain point where i had to wonder what that was and try and figure out what it was and then bring more of that out into the world and share it with people so it became more not about like proving doubters wrong but proving just supportive people like proving those people right and wanting to be that version of myself and i think that's a more powerful motivator and much more sustainable and i just know that i'm a lot happier doing it anything i say um the podcast or like the blogs or, or that i write uh, or anything like that it's just the opinion that i have now we're always like growing and progressing that could always change i could totally disagree with that at a certain point in time there might be a point where that doesn't serve me anymore i have to find something else but you know what, I would say for right now, it works for me and it's possible that that could work for somebody else. So I just thought it was helpful to share.